be recognized as the best in anything in life requires a well-balanced combination of skills. And while we often think about sports when we think about the well-rounded ultimate performer, the same concept of blending of skills applies to selling professionals as well. They too need a combination of skills to be well-rounded sales associates. They need to be able to effectively close sales, offering a complete package of goods for total customer satisfaction, while at the same time protecting the margins of the department and keeping the product sold. And just like well-trained athletes, they need the nurturing of an effective coach or manager to help motivate and develop them to be the best they can be. You know, most everyone knows one of the best ways to measure an athlete's success is through numbers, finish times, points scored, speed or place. Well, our business is just as competitive as any sport, and we as sales associates understand that numbers are also an essential way to evaluate our overall performance. That's why we have a report card, which will give us the type of information that we need to measure our sales performance. As we learn about the report card, we'll talk about four main areas. The kind of information that the report card gives, the way the information is presented, the period of sales activity that we will emphasize, and the performance review process that's been established for us. Let's start off with the kind of information. Essentially, we will all be measured across businesses on the same four basic elements, sales, margins, returns, and visibles. Here is how those figures are determined. The sales figure reflects the total net sales rung under our clerk number. Margins are determined by taking the actual margin dollars of the items sold as a percent to total sales. Margin dollars determine the amount of profit that the company earns on a piece of merchandise. More fully featured deluxe merchandise, which often offers the customer more options and styles to meet their needs, usually carries a high margin. The higher the margin, the greater the profit, and typically, the greater the compensation. Measuring margins gives us an indication of the mix of high margin and low margin merchandise that we sold. It only stands to reason that selling too much low margin merchandise can seriously impact the profitability of our department. Now let's talk about returns. The returns rate will be measured by dividing returns by net sales. We will report returns across businesses to emphasize the importance of minimizing returns. Now, we all experience returns from time to time, and there are some returns that just can't be avoided. But a large part of our returns can be avoided by asking the right questions during the qualification process and by offering customers repair options when feasible. Measuring our returns tells us how well we do at keeping our customers happy and keeping them coming back to Montgomery Ward. Visible's performance for service contracts, stain protection agreements, and furniture protection agreements will be measured by total contract dollars sold as a percent to sales of eligible units. Extended protection agreements, however, will be measured by the number of units sold as a percent to eligible units. This will enable us to also report results in the non-commission areas of electronics, housewares, and kids in our store totals. Because each of our businesses has some unique elements, there will also be some different and distinct items measured within each business. For example, Auto Express will measure plus dollars per tire, while Gold and Gems will measure diamond penetration, and Windows will report the percent of made-to-measure sales. Your manager will cover the specific elements for your business with you. But basically, the format is the same for each business. Okay, those are the highlights of the kinds of information that will be contained on the report card. Now, we'll talk about the way the information is presented. The report card will be produced in two different formats, a sales and margin version and a productivity profile and ranking version. We'll look at the sales and margin format first. The information in this report falls into two general categories, sales and margin information, and visibles. This includes all of the elements that we just talked about. This report card prints daily with week-to-date information and weekly with month-to-date totals. 
we can use this as a quick gauge to spot our successes or to watch for improvement trends in areas in which we are focusing extra efforts. The other version of the report card, the Associate Productivity Profile and Ranking Report, will be produced monthly in both current month and rolling 13-week versions. This ranking report will contain productivity information like sales per hour and associate ranking. To determine sales per hour, the total sales for each associate are divided by the hours the associate worked. In order to ensure the sales per hour ranking is fair for all associates, we will then rank associates within the volume range for the store, which is set by the corporate office. This will prevent associates in larger stores or those who work full-time hours from having an unfair advantage over part-time associates in smaller volume stores. Overall, this calculation will help level our sales per hour performance on the report card. One of the most important aspects of the report card is that our performance will be ranked with the performance of our peers in the region by business with full and part-time associates evaluated separately. For example, part-time appliance associates will be ranked with other part-time appliance associates in the region. Full-time gold and gems associates will be ranked with their peers in the region and so on. Experience has shown that ranking our performance with that of our peers can really build enthusiasm and positive competition between us. And we all know that whether in business, sports, or anything else, competition can be a great motivator. And when our managers provide us with positive recognition for good performance, our motivation to excel can increase even more. The ranking report will first show our ranking for each of the individual performance elements. Sales per hour, margin, returns and visibles, and so on in each business category. An asterisk or star will indicate those outstanding performers who are in the top 10% of their peers in the region for each of the individual elements. A pound sign will show those in the bottom 10% for the individual elements. The individual elements will then be added together and weighted. The weighting for the elements will vary by business, so your manager will cover your department's weighting with you, as shown on the report card. This weighting determines the total rank for each associate, which is the key element that our managers will use to review performance. Once again, an asterisk will indicate those top performers in the region, but this time it will indicate those of us in the top 25% of all associates in the region for total performance. A pound sign will show those of us in the bottom 25% for the total ranking. Now, let's look at the period of sales activity that we will focus on. This ranking report will be produced each month reflecting both the performance from the most recent rolling 13-week period or quarter as well as the current monthly results. Our performance results will be reviewed monthly using the rolling 13-week report. This should provide us with a very fair and realistic time period in which to monitor how we are doing. So how will all of this information be used and what is the performance review process? Well. We said in the introduction to this program that a common ingredient to successful performance is a good coach. In order to really make this report card work for us, we need to have regular communication with our coach, our manager, to discuss performance. We need to have recognition for good performance, encouragement when performance is improving, and counseling on ways to improve when our performance is deficient our managers will need to schedule monthly one-on-one -on -one sessions when we can go over the report card to discuss where we are strong and where we need to focus our efforts. You know, recognition makes us all feel good. And when we do well, we deserve it. High achievement is something to celebrate because we all know the effort that it takes to be on top. Each month, those associates in the top 25% total rank for the most recent rolling 13-week period will be given special thanks and recognition. Their pictures will be posted on a special associate recognition board and their accomplishments will be announced in pep rallies and departmental meetings. In addition, 
those top performers will be given a blue ribbon to wear on their name badge during the month so that our customers know they are dealing with a top selling professional. But what about the middle level performers, those in the middle 50% of their peers? Well, for those in this category, there are definitely some things that they're doing well and probably some things that they could do better. They'll need to continually work with their managers to identify those opportunity areas and discuss ways to improve. With the right motivation, these performers are very likely capable of excellence. For those associates who fall into the bottom 25% ranking, there will be a formal sit-down performance discussion. The manager has an obligation to make sure that each associate understands that he or she is not measuring up. And then they need to work together to develop an action plan for improvement. A simple process has been designed for monitoring and documenting performance that falls below expectations. Quite simply, each month, within two weeks after month end, our manager will review the rolling 13-week productivity and profile ranking report with us. During this discussion, those associates in the bottom 25% total ranking will be asked to identify the areas where they feel they can improve and write down ideas for doing so. Then, together with their manager, they will develop an action plan to achieve that improvement. Each month, the same report will be reviewed. If the same associate is in the bottom 25% ranking for two consecutive months, once again the associate and manager will sit down and discuss the results. The manager will ask the associate to commit to taking some very specific action steps. If by the third consecutive month the associate is still in the bottom 25% ranking for the rolling 13-week period, the associate and manager need to have a critical discussion about the associate's performance. The associate must understand that if his or her total ranking is in the bottom 25% of the quarterly rolling ranking for four consecutive months, the associate may be separated. If the associate comes off the bottom 25% quarterly ranking after the first, second, or third month, there will be no documentation again until the next 13-week performance ranking finds him or her in the bottom 25% again. However, if the associate exhibits sporadic periods of acceptable performance so that counseling ends but consistent performance is never sustained, separation can still result. As you can see, we have a clearly defined program for performance review. We each need to constantly be aware of our own performance, where we are doing well and where we need help, and be willing to address our areas for growth. If we aren't sure what steps to take to improve our performance, recommended actions to address specific areas can be found in the participant handout that accompanies this program. You know, I think we'll all like this report card. It's a great way to measure our own sales success and direct ourselves towards more sales and increased productivity.